go ahead and stand and worship God.
morning, everyone. How are you doing this morning? Good. It's so good to see you here. I pray that you had a great Christmas. I pray that um, God was in your household. I pray that you were safe and that no one got sick and all those great things. Um, Mitch is on vacation this morning, and that's a much-needed vacation, and I'm so happy that I'm the one to be able to, to provide a message for you this morning. And I pray the Lord speaks in here. Um, if this is your first time at Christian Valley, or if this is the first time watching this online, I just want you to know that you're welcome, that you are loved, and that you belong. And I pray that, that you, you feel that when you watch this service, or that if you're, you're here in person, you know that. Um, I pray you had an awesome Christmas, and, and Christmas night, I watched this, this movie called The Grinch. Everybody's seen it, but it was the Jim Carrey version, so it was kind of Zach Wayne, wacky and zany. And uh, I watched this movie, and it, you know, it's, it's really unique, and all these things happen. And throughout the, the story, this little girl teaches everybody about this story. You know, we, we need to get away from the presents and the giving and all this stuff, and they kind of come back to the true meaning of Christmas. Um, well, I think they realize throughout this whole thing that Christmas is about others. And Proverbs 21, 26 says, The righteous gives and does not hold back. The righteous gives and does not hold back. And I pray this morning as you're in church with us that you, you, you focus on giving it to God this morning. Don't worry about the frankincense or the myrrh or all those things. Let's just be present this morning. Let's worship our Heavenly Father. Let's give, our, give Him our attention and our love this morning as we, uh, as we worship Him. And uh, if you would, let, we're going to pray. We'll go right back to our worship. Heavenly Father, we love you so much, God, and we are so thankful for you. We're thankful for this season, God, because the greatest gift we've ever received has been Jesus Christ. Uh, God, I know that there's people in here that, that had a great Christmas, and I pray that we, we talk about how to open up our new year this, this morning. Father, we love you so much, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like now. song again whatever may pass and whatever lies before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy Yeah. 
Everybody had a wonderful Christmas, and as we uh, look forward to the new year, hopefully things will change and we'll be able to uh, get back to being more uh, like normal, I hope. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, spend just a few minutes on talking about who's to blame. Uh, we're always uh, quick to pass uh, the buck whenever we possibly can, and I'm talking about myself. <laughs> and so, uh, so as we, uh, as it seems, to be uh, from the principle that the blame is something that always needs to be uh, shared around, if not completely avoided at all. Uh, we, had, we find uh, that saying things like, yes, you're right, it was completely my fault, never happens for the most part. Although I did have to tell a coach one time that I was wrong. One time, Zach. <laughs> one time. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, 
uh, it's, it's never the first thought that enters our mind. Uh, we either blame God or someone else. The equipment breaks. The car quits working. It's always the car's fault. We blame things uh, that uh, go on here with problems in the world. We blame things on the weather, our parents, or even our teachers. But rarely do we accept the responsibility for ourselves. You'll be glad to know that this is not the first instance of uh, people not taking uh, and owning up to uh, being blamed. It's been around for as long as there's been people. Uh, when we read about Adam and Eve in Genesis, the first, uh, the very first uh, uh, people having the sa having the same problem. Who was the first to blame uh, someone else? Well, it was Adam. He blamed Eve, and Eve blamed the serpent. Fortunately, uh, God is good uh, at stepping in and doing what uh, we will not or cannot do. When no one uh, could take the blame, uh, it was Jesus who stepped up and said, I'll take the blame. I will take the blame for all of your wrong decisions. I will take the blame for all of your sin. Cast your cares on me, he said. In Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let's come together today and uh, hand over our cares and our troubles. Let's ask forgiveness and receive the bread and wine together. As we get ready for, uh, to practice for communion this morning, we have uh, stations set up around uh, in the sanctuary. And if you are a believer in Christ and believe that he gave his life for our sins, we want you uh, to participate with us. Let us pray. Dear God, you're an awesome God. We thank you for all that you do for us. Please help us and guide us through these troubling times. We hope that uh, uh, in the very near future, all of this will go away and we'll be able to all be back together again. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. <clears throat>
And basically everything I found said, don't have fun, hate your life, everything that's good, don't eat it. Because I love rice and bread and all those things. Well, it's not that bad, but don't start it two weeks before Christmas because you get to Christmas and everything, everything inside, it's got sugar, or it's got carbs in it. So if we're going by a barometer of you know, how good the food was, I had an awesome Christmas. Awesome Christmas, I pray you did too. Um, this sermon is called Lift Up Your Eyes. Lift Up Your Eyes. And, and as we, we work, work through this and unpack this scripture, you're going to kind of understand what that means to, to lift, lift up your eyes. And we're going to talk about a piece of scripture you may be familiar with. It's called, it's the woman at the well. It's the woman at the well. And let me just kind of explain before we get into our scripture what exactly we're going to talk about. So the woman at the well, Jesus is passing through this area called Samaria. And Samaria is not a place that Jewish people and Samarian people, they don't really mix together. Okay? Jewish people actually look down upon Samarian people, Samaritan people. So, so Jesus is passing through this area and he comes across a well and there's a woman there. And it's about noontime, they think. About noontime. So he comes across this woman, and two things are really weird here, right? One, Jewish, Jewish people don't talk to Samaritan people. That's weird. Two, people don't, go, don't get water at noontime. That's weird. Why is that weird? Everybody went early in the morning. It was cooler. That's why they went early in the morning. So it's, it's odd. You start to ask questions about this lady, and, and you can call her what you want, but she is a, a woman of the night, a woman of ill repute, uh, she's looked down upon even more. And they have this exchange. Jesus and this woman have this exchange, and it is so, it's, it's mind-altering for this woman, but it's even more so for us. Because throughout all this, Jesus approaches this well. He asks this woman for some water. She asks about water. He's like, well, I've got living water. And, and that instantly piques her interest. Because... She wants the living water. She doesn't want to have to go to the well over and over and over again. She wants living water to, to constantly be springing up in her life. Well, that happens. Jesus asks her, well, go get your husband. She says, well, I don't have a husband. She's like, yeah, that's right. You've actually got five husbands, and the one you're with now is not your husband. And she says, well, you must be a prophet. Yeah, he's at least a prophet. He's Jesus. Definitely a prophet at the, at the very least. All this happens, and at the very end of this exchange, Jesus reveals to this woman that he is the Messiah. He doesn't do this often. He doesn't just tell people, hey, I'm Jesus, I'm the Son of God. But he does right here. He tells her for this reason. And that's kind of where we're going to stop. We're going to start, we're going to read some text. And stick with me. It's, it's a few verses. But we're going to start in, in John chapter 4, verses uh, 27 through 38. And we have, a, we have it up on our screen. We call it our Sky Bible. So if you are not sure whether I'm reading the right stuff, it's right there for you. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 27. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you, why are you talking with her? These disciples were so hung up on him talking to a woman that they, didn't even, they, they, they missed the whole point of Jesus' message. Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to, to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? Yet again, these disciples are missing the point. He just told this Samaritan woman in this village that he is the Messiah, and they're worried about food, and they're worried about him talking to a Samaritan. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the reaper draws his wages. Even now, he harvests the crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked, worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits of their labor. Such an awesome text here. Before we get too far into this, let's go ahead and pray as we, uh, we start talking about our message. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning, God. I pray that you speak through me. I pray that we 
when we look at this text, God, that it jumps off the page into our hearts, Father. I pray that this text becomes alive in our hearts, God, and, and what, whatever is written here will take life in our spirits and we'll, we'll take it and we'll get closer to you from that. Father, we love you so much, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we've talked about Christmas. I hope you had an awesome one. Well, I, I, I probably can bet you that your Christmas was better than someone in, in, in Antarctica's. So America, they, they actually send researchers into Antarctica, and they have like a field research ops, and they've got a bunch of people that will stay there for weeks or months at a time. And they'll study, I don't even know what you need to study in Antarctica. It's cold, it's frozen. I don't know what else you need to know. But they send people there to go study. Well, one of the researchers actually snuck in 99 Christmas presents, 99 Christmas presents to give to the researchers and one for himself at this place. So he snuck all these gifts in. Uh, Christmas morning comes, they all get their gifts, and they're sitting, sitting together. And they open their gifts, and they open it up, and it's a rock. That's weird, right? It's a rock. But they all stood there in disbelief and silence because... For some of these men, it's probably been a year since they've seen a rock. Since they've seen a rock. They, all they've seen is ice and man-made structures and each other. So sitting there, they see this rock, and all that was was a, was a, it was a reminder of their home. It was a reminder of being back home with their families. And it just gave them a taste of, yes, there's something out there other than what you're in the middle of right now. Isn't that an encouraging message? of how much we're in the middle of this pandemic or this, this stuff that's going on around our lives, and it's almost hard to think back to a time where we didn't have to wear masks to see each other. Well, there was a time where that happened, and we'll, we'll get there again. We'll get there again. It's crazy how much perspective our perspective changes off things like that. A little rock like that can change how we think about things. Nothing's changed. But everything has changed to, the, to those men in Antarctica, or to us now. Everything has changed because of the, the context that we're in. I think we need a perspective change for 2021. I think that's what God's telling us right now. I think he's saying you need to change your perspective for this upcoming year. Psalm 3 says, he is the lifter of my head. He says, God is the lifter of my head. And as we talk about lifting up our eyes, we're gonna, I'm going to explain what that means as we go. There's also a passage in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. And this whole message is going to be talking about, we don't really understand 2020. We don't really get why, why it happened like it happened, so what are we going to do for 2021? Well, we're going to lift up our eyes. That's what this whole message is about. And throughout this scripture here, I've kind of boiled down my three main takeaways from that scripture of Jesus telling us to lift up your eyes. As he told these disciples, he tells them to open up their eyes, as we read earlier, because there's a dust cloud coming. There's a dust cloud coming. My first takeaway from this was lift up our perspective. We have to lift our perspective. Seeing things from God's vantage point. We want to see things from God's vantage point. And when we do that, I mean, would our heads explode? Can we even see things the way God sees it? No, it's, it's tough, but that's what we have to do. A lot of times I'll get into this mindset of, I can do everything, I can do all, this, all these things by myself, right? I'm not connected to other people. I, I, I'm all I need, or I can work hard enough and accomplish these things. But I can fall into this mindset, and before I know it, I'll miss the, the forest for the trees. And maybe we're in a pandemic right now, and you're saying, I don't understand how this all fits together, but, but I promise you that his thoughts are not our thoughts. And he is gonna, there is going to be good that comes out of this year. But for 2021, we have to lift our perspective to be able to see those things. We've got to see things from his point of view. How is he going to use this pandemic? I don't want to write off 2021 as a as a regrowth year for a church. No, I think there's a dust cloud above this church that's, that's growing in Jonesboro and the surrounding areas. That dust cloud that it references, 
are those people from that village, that, that Samaritan village. He talked to this woman. There's a dust cloud. That dust cloud meant that people were moving towards Jesus, that her testimony was so unbelievable that literally this whole village was moving towards Jesus. And as a result, there was a dust cloud. Disciples were worried about um, food, Samaritan women. They weren't worried about people that need to be saved. And I'm so nervous that this year I'm so worried about a virus that I forget that there is a dust cloud above this church, above this town of people who need to hear about Jesus, that need to hear the good word of Jesus. And for some reason, I'm, I'm, a, I'm apprehensive because it's a weird time right now. I'm telling you, there are people in this area that need to hear about, about Jesus. They need to hear our testimony. They need to see what Jesus and God has done in our lives. And we have to be aware that that dust cloud's there. It's funny because when you become a Christian, you become grafted in. That's what they, it's kind of a vineyard term. You're grafted into this family. Now, I stand up here with the full realization that this church is, is an old church, and I'm far from one of the first people to ever stand on this stage. And I'm super proud of that, that I'm part of a family of, of a church, not only a family of this church, but a family of a Christian. And we're in the same family as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's crazy. We are Christians. And when we become a Christian, we're grafted into that family, and we become one. And, and that is so important to us. I'm going to read verse 38 again. It says, I sent you to reap what you have not worked for, worked for. Others have done the hard work, and you have reaped the benefits. I wrote this down as I was getting ready for this sermon. You better be careful for what you pray for because your kids and your grandkids are going to be the one that gets the answer to that prayer. You better be careful what you pray for because your kids and your grandkids are going to be the ones, most likely, that get the answer to that prayer. Guys, there's a field ready for harvest. Not four months from now, as these disciples were wondering, there's a dust cloud and it is waiting and ready. And I'm so excited to be a part of this church where I know there, there's growth, and there's testimony, and people here love Jesus. And they, and they want to share that with people. And I'm telling you, that we, don't have to, we don't need to be irresponsible about sharing that message with others. We've got to be safe wearing masks and social distancing, but we can still reach people for the kingdom. For the kingdom. talking about not having perspective, you know, there's a lot of times that I'm so zoomed in on things, that I'm so concentrated on things. Let me just tell you, I like to plan, so I want to plan out my next five years. I want to plan out my next ten years. I want to have, live in this area, or have this truck, or have this job, or whatever, right? And yet, I don't even remember if I blew out the candle at my house this morning, right? I don't even know if I locked my truck outside. What I'm saying is, Keep in mind that, that God is in control of, of, of all of these things. These things that we're so zoomed in on, I don't even know what's going on beyond these walls because I can't see there. What I'm saying is be patient through this storm because God is, is going to work out the other side. He's already been working. We're going to see the fruits of that labor, but we have to stay with it. My second point was Lift your priorities. God's going to take care of the bills. He's going to take care of your food and your gas. He's going to help you lose those 15 pounds. Okay? But for, for 2021, I want, to, I want to think big this year. I want to pray big. I want, to, I want to hope for big things again. I don't want to ask or just, just rely on God for, for small things. I want to rely on Him for everything, for big things this year. I want my... My knowledge and my desire to know God to, to just jump off the chart this year and to grow with Him and to be with Him. We can ask for the job, the car, the marriage. Not if you're already married. Okay? If you're already married, don't ask for the marriage. You're in a marriage. We can ask for those things. But I want to ask for more this year. And I don't want to say ask, I mean I want to hope for more. I want to expect more. I think there are people here in this room that need to expect for more this year. 
I like to tell you about a friend of mine. There's a, there's a friend that I know, and every time I talk to him, he feeds my soul. And I met him through ministry. He builds houses. He's in construction. And, and essentially what he does is he, he builds houses. He's a, he's a framer. He builds houses, but, but in his mind, he's not just building houses. He's building houses for the Lord. When he goes to work, he's building houses for the Lord. He's, he is serving the kingdom by being a good um, steward of his job and his spirit. And whenever he talks to a customer, he's speaking about Jesus. He's, he's telling them his testimony. He had been through addiction. He'd been come out the other side. God has blessed him. He's got skills. He is using those skills for the kingdom. And when I talk to him, it feeds my soul. Brothers and sisters, find people in your life that feed your soul. How do you know your, fo- your, your soul is being fed? You'll know. You'll know it. How do you know you're full physically? I found that out Christmas. I'm full because I know I'm full. I feel it. How do you know you're being fed spiritually? You'll know it. You'll just know. You'll just know. You'll just know. And I go and I talk to him, and he's busy, and I'm busy, and we kind of we, we catch up when we can, but every time I talk to him, I know it's a blessing because he tells me something else that God's doing in his life. Or maybe not that, but sometimes he's being he's be encouraged or lifted up. But when I talk to him, I know that God's moving. I talk to him about what's going on in, in my life and ministry and being newly engaged in all these things. And every time I talk, it, it's so encouraging. And I pray that you find someone that feeds your soul, that you can talk to and share, give testimony to. Lastly, I think one of our, I think one of our priorities should be others. And I'm going to read verse 39 here. Many of the Samaritans from that town believe in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. These, think about this for a second. Jesus got 12 young Jewish men to spend a weekend in Samaria. That's crazy. In this context, these guys wouldn't be caught dead in Samaria. He got them to stay for two nights in Samaria. And as they did... Their worldviews expanded. Their worldviews expanded. And before long, these guys were worried about, excuse me, these guys were worried about food, lunch, or Samaritan people. Well, all of a sudden, God says, wait a minute. There's a dust cloud here. There's people that need to be saved. Do not lose sight of who I am and why I'm here. Goodness gracious, did I need to hear that. Do not lose sight of what's the most important and why you're here. Am I still reaching people for Jesus? Am I still spreading the good word? Am I giving testimony? Am I, be, am I being a good steward of what God has blessed me with? These are questions I've asked during the pandemic. And you may have too. Am I using what God's given me in this troubling time? Because that's what I'm afraid of is I'm going to get to the end of it. And like I missed the ball here somewhere. I missed out. Because God had people need to be saved and I wasn't, I wasn't reaching out for them. Because i got work here to do on earth. I think we need to venture into new areas this year. There's people that we don't, we don't agree with, either political views or just any kind of views that we don't agree with or we're not on the same page with. God's telling us, just like these Jewish men in these, this Samaritan town, we need to go and venture out and see these people. We've got to talk to them. They, they're, they're needing to hear the good news just, just as much as anyone else. I think God's telling us we need to venture into new areas this year. I think I mentioned this already, but I, 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 as I was getting ready for this sermon, I prayed for, for, a, for a group of people who need to expect again, to expect that God's good, to believe again that God is is the giver of life, and he gives it abundantly. I think there's people out there, if if your earthly father gives you good gifts on Christmas, or your earthly whoever gives you awesome gifts on Christmas, how much better gifts does your your heavenly father give you? If you miss the wild-eyed, passionate Christian of yesteryear, and you don't feel like you're doing that, 2021 is, is a year that is right for us to look up and say, there is a dust cloud here and God is calling us, calling me 
to be a good steward of what I've been given. And I, should, I need to share that word. And lastly, my, my last point here is lift your expectations. Lift your expectations. And it's amazing what one trying year, what one year uh, that's been tough, that's been hard, can do when it comes into another year. How that kind of bleeds in. And all of a sudden we say things like, well, that's just the way life goes. That's just how, that's just the hand we've been drawn. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to look at, at things and say, I'm going to keep my expectations low because if I do that, I'll never be disappointed. I, I want to dream big and hope big and pray big this year. And let God use me as he will. Don't just write off 2021. Let's use this year to, to share the good word. These guys, these, these disciples that we've been talking about, they found lunch in a village, and that's all they were concerned about. They were like, we've got to get this guy food. We got, it's, it's Jesus. We've got to get him food, and we've got to get him out of here. He's got miracles to perform. And they were just trying to, to press the fast-forward button on being in Samaria, being in this village. And I felt that way, too, sometimes. I felt that, like, I just want to fast-forward past this, through this, this crisis of the pandemic want to fast forward to a place where we can wear we don't have to wear a mask anymore and that's that's okay to wish that but what that does is it makes me forget what the season that I'm in and why I'm here and God's going to use me as an instrument but only if I'm in this moment and I believe that he's going to use me in this moment I think he's also going to give us if we ask him for it and faithful for it, supernatural energy. Supernatural energy. You ever hear an old preacher say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach myself happy? No? <laughs> I used to watch old TV shows. There would be, be pastors and they'd be sweating. They'd be up there just sweating, saying, I'm going to preach myself happy. What? When I, when I get to preach and I get to study the word and, and deliver a message, I feel energized in my soul. I feel it in my soul. I feel as if God has placed me in that, that part and, and it feeds my soul and it gives me energy. And no matter where you're at, God's got you there for a reason. Maybe you don't feel energized anymore, but God's got you there for a reason and, and we need to be energized for 2021. What is it that you love to do? What is it that feeds your soul? What's your calling? Don't let the devil trick you and say, I need a change of vocation or or location because wherever you're at God's got you there for a reason he's going he's to do things in your life but we have to allow him to do those things these disciples were saying four more months four more months they were talking about this harvest and how people will, will sow seeds and then other people will reap the harvest of those things that's true, that's, that's how that works a lot of times in ministry. But these disciples are worried about, well, we'll do this in you know, four months down the road when we'll reap this harvest. No, no Jesus is saying, no, we're, we're about to reap it right now. Someone's going to get saved today. We're about to reap this today. There's a dust cloud here. Don't look four months down the road, it's right in front of us. I say 2021, needs, we need to act as if there is a dust cloud above this town of people that need to hear about Jesus, and that there, there's our sign. People are moving. We need to look up for 2021. We need to look up and see that there is a dust cloud, and, and, and God is still moving, but we have to see it. We can't look past this upcoming year. Lastly, the band would go ahead and come back up. I don't know if, if you guys know a whole lot about me, but there was a time where I, um, in about the 10th grade, I went to a, a church camp here at this church, actually. So I went to a church camp called CIY in the summer, and then I had an amazing exposure to the Holy Spirit, Jesus, first time ever. And as that happened, I came back and got baptized, right? Awesome time, had an amazing experience. Well, throughout my life, 
things that happened, and I had gotten off that, that path. I had gotten off that path. And I, and I entered into this treatment program where I met Jesus in a real way. So I'm, I'm going into this treatment program, and I'm packing my bags, and um, getting ready to go into this program, and I look over on a shelf, and, and you know I had no relationship with God. I had nothing to, I hadn't spoken to him in, in a long time. Well, I look over and there's this Bible on the bookshelf. This is actually the Bible, this is it. And this Bible is near and dear to my heart. Because this was the Bible that was given to me at Christian Valley when I was baptized as a 10th grader. And a few people had written on the, in, on the inner part of this, this Bible, and they had written a little note. Well, one of them says, we're proud of you and your decision to follow Christ. Wherever life leads you, always keep your eyes on the Lord. That's what it, that's what it said. Jim, could you bring up that last piece of scripture for me? On the John chapter 4 part? There's a piece in this scripture where it says, just then. Verse 27. If you'll look up there, it says, Then Jesus declared, I the one speaking to you am he. Verse 27, just then. Don't overlook those two words, brothers and sisters. Just then. That's how God moves, isn't it? Just then, God showed up. Just then. I went into this program, and I had this Bible with me, and I didn't really, wasn't using it a whole lot, but eventually, just then, God grabbed my soul, my heart. And just then I started reading into this Bible. And just then as I was reading it, I opened up the front cover and I saw these, these, these notes from, from dear volunteers and, and Mitch and Dwayne. And just then there was this outpouring of the Holy Spirit in my life. And it reminded me, the seeds that Christian Valley had sowed into me when I was a 10th grader, well, they had come to harvest. Years down the road, Years down the road. Just then, the Spirit overwhelmed me. And just then, I gave my life to Christ. Just then, God put it on my heart and said, I need you to work for the kingdom. You're in ministry now. Just then, I stayed at that program a little bit longer. Just then, I talked to Mitch Ford. Just then, I was hired by Christian Valley. Just then, I'm, I'm blessed enough to be up here with you this morning. I need you guys to see that there are so many just thens in our lives. Just then, if you look back at the last five years, how many just thens God has placed in your life. I had seen it when I read this, te read this text, and this Bible is near and dear to my heart. Don't let your just thens pass you by. 2021 is not a year for us to look past or, or let's just fast forward to this thing. Now I think God is wanting us to plant seeds in people's lives just like this Bible did for me. And we might not see the harvest until 10 years down the road. This has happened with me. But I pray that we have to play at those seeds nonetheless. We have to understand that there is a dust cloud above this, this, this area. People need Jesus. People are clamoring for him. We have to look up in 2021 and see that God is desperately needed by a bunch of people. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning. God, I pray that this text has come alive in people's lives. There are so many just ends out there, Father. I thank you for my just ends. God, I want to be a part of so many just thens for people in the future. Use me as your hands and feet to move the gospel. God, I pray that, that 2021 is not a year of just, let's just wait this out. No, God, this, there's just thens happening all the time. We love you so much, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would y'all stand at this time of invitation?
was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first Can we give our band a hand? Thank you all so much.